As you all know, yesterday, March 22nd, a few moments later, as you all know, yesterday, uh, as you all know, yesterday, March 22nd, the feds announced yet another interest rate hike of 25 basis points. Now there was some speculation it, it was going to happen. Others speculated it wasn't going to happen because of the recent bank failures with Silicon Valley Bank and with Signature Bank. So they went ahead and did it anyway. They raised it 25 basis points. So, okay, here's the burning question. How is that affecting the housing market and the mortgage interest rates? Well, yeah, I think you know where we're going with this one. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to highlight what was discussed at this meeting with Chairman Powell and then we're going to touch on how this impacted mortgage rates. So uh, buckle up, guys. This is a good one. Let's get started. So I just have to start off by saying that um, every day I wake up, I literally think to myself, what news are we going to get today about our economy and this housing market? And I've gotten to a point now, I try not to stress about it really. Look, it is what it is. And we just kind of have to pivot and work with it. And my job is to provide you all this information so it could help you make a good educated decision on whether or not you should be buying a house right now. Let me break down what was discussed yesterday with the recent rate hike and tell you why they made that decision, even though we had some bank failures, the reason why they made the decision to raise it anyway it's pretty interesting. So let's get into it. So these are excerpts that I pulled off of CNBC and these were like updates as the meeting was going on and, and different journalists were throwing in their, uh, their reports from what Powell was saying. So the one positive thing that came out of this meeting is that the fed signaled that there's going to be one more rate increase this year. I mean, the rate increase they just did, it was the ninth increase they've done since last year. So this is a good thing. This could be the beginning of the end. So it says here, in its projections, the Federal Reserve signaled that there is just one more rate increase coming this year. The committee will closely monitor incoming information and assess the implications for monetary policy. Now, the Federal Open Market Committee, this is the committee that sets the Fed rates, uh, they did assure that the banking system is sound and resilient in light of these recent bank failures. The U.S. banking system is sound and resilient. Recent developments are likely to result in tighter conditions for households and businesses and to weigh on economic activity, hiring, and inflation. The extent of these effects is uncertain. The committee remains highly attentive to inflation risk. Okay, so now to answer the question that um, there was speculation that they were going to do a pause on raising the rates this time, this is what Powell had to say about that. We did consider that in the days running up to the meeting. Powell said the reason for the very strong consensus for a rate hike resulted from the intermediate data on inflation and the labor market that came in stronger than expected before the recent events. We are committed to restoring price stability, and all of the evidence says that the public has confidence that we will do so that will bring inflation down to 2% over time. It's important that we sustain that confidence with our actions as well as our words. All right, so basically the reason they raised it, they still went ahead and raised it because the speculations were that if they raised rates again, this could impact the banking system. Experts have said that the banks failed because of the, not all the banks that have failed, but some of them that failed, it's because of the sudden rise in interest rates that's impacted the banks and caused them to fail. Some don't feel that way. Some feel that it's because of the mismanagement at the banks, but what they're doing is, so this is my interpretation of this. So they raised the interest rates, you know, the 25 basis points. And with the hopes that because of the banking crisis that's been going on, they're now tightening lending conditions and credit conditions with the hopes that that's going to pull people back from spending as well. Let's see if that's going to work. They think it will. It's going to have an effect on the economy and just by the banks to tightening the conditions, but only time will tell to see if that fixes it. How is this affecting mortgage rates? So let's get into that now. Let's talk about the mortgage rates. Now, remember, the federal interest rate does not directly impact mortgage interest rates. Mortgage interest rates are impacted by the 10-year treasury yield. So let's take a look. So for today, March 23rd, where is the 10-year treasury yield? That's the number we have to look at when it comes to looking at the mortgage rates. Therefore, 
as of today, March 23rd, the day after the Feds raised the interest rates 25 basis points, interest rates actually fell. Mortgage interest rates fell. Mortgage rates for March 23rd are at a 30-year mortgage rate, 6.89%. That's down from 7.02% from last week. A 15-year fixed rate is at 6.12, down from 6.28. A 30-year jumbo is 6.97, and the rate last week for that was 7.03. And a 5-1 arm is down to 5.69%. Uh-oh. That's down from 5.73%. So again, this is affected by the 10-year treasury yield. So don't panic now that the Fed's raised interest rates, it's going to affect uh, your mortgage rates. We have to look at the 10-year treasury yield. Now, will the interest rates continue to trend down from here? There's a lot of talk saying that, yeah, it will slightly. We're not going to see like major decreases, but you never know. The only way we're going to see those numbers come back down even more is once inflation gets under control or if we're in a recession, which that a lot of people I've talked to in the, in the mortgage world are saying, you know, this could now throw us into recession and we could be, you know, now the rates are going to come back down again, the mortgage rates. Now, how is this impacting the housing market for the spring? In my opinion, here in the Northeast, New York, New Jersey area, we still have a big inventory problem. Now, there are inventory problems in other parts of the country. There are price decreases in many other markets across the country, but in some markets, there's still a big inventory issue. It's an inventory issue around the entire country, but those inflated markets such as Austin, Boise, San Francisco, they're the ones who are seeing the biggest decreases. But in the Sun Belt area, Florida, Georgia, and up here in the Northeast, like New York, New Jersey, we're still seeing multiple offer situations. It hasn't changed. And I've been talking about this for the past, like, few weeks now. So what does one do? I don't think the inventory is going to change much at all, especially in this spring market. It's because of those higher interest rates. So I've been saying for a while now, my live streams and then, uh, you know, on my videos here, I think if the rates come down to say in the 5% range or like low fives, that might be the tipping point for sellers to say, okay, now I want to sell my home and trade up. Only because they have so much equity in their home, they can put that much more money down on the next house and not have to borrow as much. I know I'm sounding like a broken record. I've been saying this every week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but as of right now, if these interest rates stay where they are, I don't see this changing. I don't see the inventory changing. And we're still, unfortunately, going to have this problem here in, in the Northeast and those markets that, you know, the buyer demand is still really high. And now if the rates come down even more, more people are going to be jumping back into the market. As a matter of fact, it's last week, it was a third straight week in a row where mortgage applications were up. People are getting approved, they're getting pre-approved, but they have nothing to buy, unfortunately. So yes, the federal interest rates are causing the mortgage rates to come back down. They are, but what's that going to do for the housing markets right now it's not going to do much so we just have to watch this closely you also have to watch the employment we got to watch the job market because that's another indicator where the housing market would get deeply affected if the job market crashes we have lose a lot of jobs then that will affect the housing so i hope this information helps you out and reassures you and what's going on with this housing market and with the rise in the federal interest rates but fortunately they are saying it's going to go up one more time so let's hope this is the beginning of the end and we can find Finally, resume some normalcy. If you'd like to have some more information just about buying a house, you're thinking about making a purchase this year, check out this playlist over here. I think you would really learn a lot from that. Thank you so much for watching me today. My name is Jackie Baker, and I will see you next time.